Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Before presenting, I want to apologize for not being able to attend the conference. And I want to also to warmly thank the sensors organizing committee that has allowed us to present our work by the Bureau. So my name is Frank Ballet from CEIT, and I will present the design of a 2050 radar circuit dedicated to the conditioning of optomechanical transducers for mass sensing applications. It is worth mentioning that the work has been performed by Hussein Elmi Dawere during its PhD period at CEABD. Mass sensing is of big interest in a wide variety of applications. It could help in detecting particles as atoms, molecules, or biological entities, as depending on the slide. Mass sensing systems are still based on UV and Berkeley chemicals. There is a big interest in providing a fast and portable mass sensing system able, for example, to detect biological entities directly in the contaminated area of pastel diagnostics. There is thus a global research effort towards miniaturization of mass sensors, as depicted in this slide, even if optomechanical performances are far below the performances of classical mass sensing systems. Also, mechanical sensor seems to be good candidates for that purpose. So, this is the outline of the presentation. First, we will present the mechanical transducer principle. Then, we will discuss about the proposed readout circuit. We will present them the main experimental results of the conditioning of an optical mechanical sensor. It's a design you don't think it's a conclusion and prospect in and my thought. The principle of an optomechanical sensor is described. An optomechanical, an optomechanical stone resource is composed of a silicon wet guide and a silicon grease, which is placed very close to the wet guide at some pains of nanometers. When the laser is applied at wet guide input, a part of its light will go through the gap between the wet guide and the disc, thanks to the phenomenon of evanescent coupling. The light will propagate along the disc circumference. If the disc circumference equals an integral number of the laser wavelengths, there will be wave additive effect. The energy will accumulate in the disc, leading to a decrease in the power of the laser and the protodiode output, as it could be seen. In the transmission diagram. In fact, the light exerts some forces at the disk border and induces a slight modification of the disk radius, which in turn excites the disk mechanically according to a radial dressing mode. Modulation of the optical power at the photodiode appears as the disk resonance frequency. Using such optomechanical sensor as a mass sensor device is straightforward. A functionalization of the disk will be performed to interact with particular particles. Particular deposition increases the mass of the disk and thus lowers its mechanical resonance frequency. During the deviation of the resonance frequency, will give insight on the amount of deposited particles. The resonance frequency is typically between 200 and 300 MHz, but some sensors have been demonstrated at 1 MHz. Typical sensitivity of 1 autogram per Hz is common. At CLAT, we are considering mainly two kinds of optomechanical sensors. The first one is an opti optical actuative device, which has been presented so far. This device benefits from a very high optical quality factor. This is quite to resonate in leaky, contrary to men's resonators, and thus is a good candidate for biological applications. Nevertheless, the mechanical resonance frequency depends a lot on temperature and on the amount of optical power. Thus, without any feedback inputs to control the device, its readouts could be very tricky. CRLED is also considering electrostatically actuated optomechanical sensor. It is basically the same device, but with electrodes that have been aimed around the disk so that the disk could be excited by external electrical silence. Because of the electrodes, the device is less one to resonate in liquid. 
in the rest compared to other mainstream electoral counterparts, the device presents a much better quality factor and much better SNR thanks to the optical transduction that avoids the direct loading of the mechanical resonator by the reload electronics. On top of that, the electrodes provide possible feedback inputs, which are very convenient for the reload. We choose the, the electrostatically actuated device for demonstration. Auto-mechanical mass sensing system should be composed of a laser source and auto-mechanical device, a photodiode, and a real electronics able to follow the variation of the frequency of the motor of the disc, as miniaturized laser source and photodiodes are already available. We need only the demonstration of the compact electronics to demonstrate a compact portable mass sensor. Thus, the target of this work is to provide a compact reload set kit. Ideally, the electronics should not bring noise, that is, the electronics should not degrade increasing performances of the transducer in terms of frequency stability. In addition, we have a providing a versatile solution able to combine with a wide variety of optimal mechanical devices having very different resonance frequencies. What is more, we aim at providing a solution that could be adapted to reading of a matrix of devices. Increasing the effective area is indeed mandatory to limit the acquisition time of mass sensing applications. This implies adding matrices of more than 1,000 optomechanic codes devices. In fact, it is tried to propose a readout architecture. It is based on the frequency log mode that embeds a heterogeneous stage and a PLL module. The working process is as follows. The modulating signal as the output of the optomechanical device is used and is converted into an analog signal by the file to protodiode, the transit that's amplifier is used to transform the current input into a voltage and to bring some amplification. The signal is first down programmed to a lower frequency with the help of a local oscillator and a mixer. The signal is then applied to the input of the PLL, which adjusts its DCO frequency according to the phase zero at its PFD input. The DCO frequency is then mixed back to upper frequency with the help of the same local oscillator and the earth converter mixer. So the signal is then applied to the electrode of the two mechanical devices. Let's imagine that the resonance frequency of the disk has shifted due to a mass deposition. As the resonance frequency of the two mechanical resonator has shifted away from the frequency of its excitation cycle, a phase shift will appear at the output of the resonator and thus at the input of the PLL after the down conversion. The so PLL will be in phase zero. So the PLL will tend to vary the PCO frequency in such a way that the phase zero decreases at the PLL input. This results in the variation of the unconverted state frequency at resonator input when the system is not the frequency at resonator input tracks the resonance frequency of the optomechanical sensor. What is more, the frequency variation of the sensor input is equal to the frequency variation of the PLL DCO. So the measurement of the resonator frequency shift will be easily read by measuring the frequency of the DCO of the PLL using a counter or a frequency meter. This is like as a detailed implementation of the HLL, we use a resonator having a resonance frequency of 316 megahertz, and we use the local oscillator ranging from 263 to 221 megahertz, so that and then we have an intermediate frequency of 40 megahertz at the PLL input. An amplifier uh, has been used between uh, after the transdependence amplifier in order to provide enough final level at the mixer input. A photograph of the board is presented here. The board is compatible with both optical and electrical inputs for characterization purposes. Three outputs are available to demonstrate ability to address several sensors. You can see here the electrical characterization of the AHFLL. As we face some problems with the board, 
We implemented the backup solution by assigning application boards. The process payments permits to verify the stability of the proposed IHFML loop and we were able to measure the phase-out performances of the KPD boards. This measurement point, point out some drawback of the demonstrator as an evident noise degradation. For instance, the CO phase noise is consistent with the data sheet. PLL noise shape is characteristic of the PLL, but its phase noise is suboptimal, certainly due to the noise of the comparators used to sharpen the PLL input signals, and certainly due, due to the noise of the sharpen of the PLL. Shape of the AH FLL is consistent with what was expected, even if a degradation can be seen. It seems that the PLL phase noise is multiplied at AH FLL outputs. Once the functionality of the AHFLL has been demonstrated, an experiment has been set up, including the laser tools and an electrostatically actuated optical mechanical device. You can see the test bench, far from ideal, but which succeeded in demonstrating the feasibility of the control and readout of the sensor to the AHFLL. First, the frequency stability of the different blocks of the AHFLL have been measured with the locking amplifier. Measurements are confirmed that the down and up conversion stages are main contributors to the AH FLL frequency deviations. The range curve gives the frequency deviation of the entire higher AH, AH FLL in open loop mode that is without the auto mechanical device. As it can be seen, a 20 ppb frequency stability could be obtained after two seconds. Last, the frequency stability of the overall mass sensing system using the auto mechanical device has been measured in the closed loop. A flow of 500 ppb has been measured after 100 milliseconds. The stability is consistent with the frequency stability measured on the auto mechanical device in the loop. To be concluded that after 100 milliseconds, the frequency deviation is not limited anymore by the readout electronics, but by the performance of the chosen optomechanical device. Last, we propose to demonstrate the ability of the AHFLL to track mass deposition. As experimental setup, we don't follow mass deposition. We propose to emulate the mass deposition by slightly changing the local oscillator frequency. Indeed, the heterodyne stage behavior is quite symmetrical for the local oscillator and for the optomechanical device. When the local oscillator frequency is decreased by 1.5 MHz steps, the PCO of the PLL tracks the local oscillator frequency variation with no bounds, showing good stability of the loop and the ability to track the mass deposition. To conclude, we have presented a readout architecture that, to the best of our knowledge, is the first demonstration of a readout circuit dedicated to intrastatically actuating optomechanical sensors. We propose an architecture for the AHFLL, which is a frequency adjustable sent to an interrogate module. Once designed with components of the shelf, a 20 pp frequency deviations after two seconds have been, have been demonstrated. We show a demonstration of a complete auto mechanical system which presents a frequency deviation of 500 dp, which is limited by the frequency deviation of the auto mechanical device used for the demonstration. So, for that, the overall system demonstrates its ability to track frequency deviation and so its ability to track mass deposition. I thank you for your attention.